Coming up next, how Chinese observers see President Hu Jintao's visit to the United States. And how Cuba and Pakistan are forging their relationship from the ashes of last year's earthquake. Thank you for joining us in this week's edition of Worldview from Islamabad. We'd like to focus in our first segment on President Hu Jintao's visit to the United States. The President of China was in the United States last week. It was a major visit. I'm sure many of you followed that visit. And we saw how the President of China was sort of charming the American business community, the American political community, and of course, the ruling elite in Washington, D.C. In this segment, I have with me a very prominent uh, Chinese uh, scholar and journalist who's based right here in Islamabad. And I'm going to talk to him about the background of that visit and how Chinese observers saw this visit in its entirety. So I welcome here Mr. Chu Rong, who is uh, a senior correspondent for the Guangming Daily, a Chinese uh, newspaper. Mr. Chu, and I'll call you wrong, actually. Yeah, we, we are please. friends. Please. So, wrong. Uh, uh, there are many skeptics in the United States who would like to contain China. And there are those people also in the United States who would like to engage China. Now, the, president of, uh, the, the visit of President Hu Jintao, has it succeeded in neutralizing those in America who would like to contain China? I think so, to answer this question, Ahmed, I think we should just say this way. Right now, China and America are uh, addressing the differences, uh, differences through the mutual respect and mutual understanding. So uh, President Hu Jintao's visit, as uh, uh, President George Bush said, that uh, his visit will further this kind of uh, friendship on the basis of the candid and the cooperation, uh, candid cooperation. So as far as we are concerned, uh, some people just think there will be certain kind of breakthrough and uh, oh, there should be certain kind of breakthrough of uh, uh, Sino-American relationship through the, uh, President uh, Hu Jintao's visit. But I, uh, on my personal point of view, I think Sino and American relationship has already just uh, go beyond, gone beyond that. That to say, we don't need certain kind of uh, symbolic breakthrough to maintain the very mature friendship. So, so what was the purpose? Are you telling me that the leaders of China, basically, in visiting the United States at this time, were not actually expecting a breakthrough, but were trying to sustain a dialogue? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. You know that is what I'm saying is, uh, you know that's a lot of new terms, such as uh, dialogue and uh, common ground, and to enhance, uh, to uh, deepen the common, common ground to uh, improve the Sino-American uh, uh, economic relations and uh, just to enlarge our uh, cooperation field and uh, to just uh, have um, mutual trust, a lot of new terms. That is to say that is uh, normally we can say the relationship between China and America is normal, sound, is good. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, wrong. Wait a second. Yeah. Let, let me ask you another question here. Mm. Now, uh, were the Americans, and I mean the U.S. government and also the U.S. media, respectful of the president of China during his stay in the United States? Well, I think that's, uh, there are several issues here. Hu Jintao, you know, he has an uh, uh, engineering uh, profession. He used to graduate from Tsinghua University. Mm. So he had had... Uh, it's very easy and natural for him to have a very good engagement with mm -hmm. American businessmen, American manufacturing field. Also, because he's a uh, uh, good background in Tsinghua University, so he is really the best person to make a speech in Yellow University. You, I, I think you have already read the news. Uh, oh, yes, the of course. Yeah, the, yeah. So that's uh, all his uh, style is uh, very intimate, very intimate, just like uh, family atmosphere. And his image uh, is uh, really not very, not aggressive. 
not a uh, very radical not uh, radical uh, wrong you, you just raised a very interesting point because yeah. you're you're so right because i saw president uh, hu when he was visiting uh, boeing uh, yeah. and, and he was sitting there yeah. and he was addressing the boeing uh, yeah. staffers yeah. and he seemed very much at home yeah, uh, it, it just almost felt like he's sitting with peop like-minded people, yeah. people whom he can be very uh, sort of uh, informal with. Yeah, well, because he used to work for uh, Chinese uh, Youth League for a long time, you see, and he has a uh, long engagement uh, uh, that is with the Chinese Youth League. He l would like to have a very good uh, interaction with the students of university and uh, with the next generation. I think for him it's very easy to do this and that, you see. And because his uh, professional background, and it's also natural for him just to have a very intimate, uh, very frank dialogue with uh, the people concerned, mm -hmm. with the people who have interest mm -hmm. in some of the businesses or something like that. Okay, Rong, tell me one more thing. What kind of impact? Tell me right now the mindset. I know that you follow American politics as well, yeah. and you read what is written about China in the United States. Mm -hmm. The skeptics, people who want to contain China. Yeah. What kind of impact? What kind of uh, impact this visit uh, would have had on them? Well, uh, I think it's the first. It's a really very important visit for the Chinese uh, uh, head of the, the head of the state of China to go to the states uh, to to have the very uh, direct and a deep engagement with American people. Let them see how the China uh, conduct in the international world and how the Chinese leader are. You see, they can see that. Let me ask you one more question. Yeah. This time, the observers who watched President Hu Jintao's visit to the U.S. Mm -hmm. also noticed that uh, the American officials were sort of respectful to China in a sense that they did not this time talk very openly about democracy related questions, okay. which they always do. I mean, they try to, we know that, that how the Americans uh, usually try to tell different countries of the world, you know, how, how to uh, go about uh, the question of democracy in their own countries. They do that with us here in Pakistan. They also do that with you in China. But of course, uh, we, I mean, in Pakistan, a lot of people believe that uh, we also have our own special circumstances and we need to move accordingly. And I think the Americans are beginning to understand also that the same thing in the case of China. Do, do you feel that? Well, I quite agree to <coughs> your important views, uh, Ahmed. I think that one thing uh, that we should uh, notice that is uh, China's uh, democracy process uh, is going on, going on very smoothly. But uh, different country, different nation with a different history mm. and a tradition may have the different definition mm. on the term mm. of uh, democracy. So in this case, uh, maybe Americans mentioned a certain kind of democracy, as George Bush used to say, that is, uh, you can have the free speech and uh, uh, free worship and uh, an assembly or something like that, mm -hmm. which China has uh, already just realized for a long time. But uh, maybe the degrees, the standards are different. Mm -hmm. And the process is also different. Yeah. I mean, you have such a big, vast country yeah. where you need to have a strong government and certain controls. But at the same time, you have a, a, a democracy in action within the Communist Party of China, a process of consensus building. It's amazing. It's yeah. an amazing process. Yeah. Yeah. Many people don't know about this. Yeah. I think that uh, I also would like to just uh, uh, take this opportunity to thank uh, <coughs> to our Pakistani friend, without the Pakistani friend's help, and Sino-American relations cannot go uh, uh, such fast and stable. stable. Yeah, I think because, Pakistan played a role. Uh, Pakistan played a very vital role in 1971 when uh, Henry Kissinger, I mean the former uh, Secretary <coughs> of the States of America, mm. who went to visit China for 40 eight hours that's a change the whole history of the globe you see mr chu rong a senior correspondent a senior journalist with the chinese guaming daily newspaper thank you very much for being here with us and coming up next we have a discussion with the ambassador of the republic of cuba here in pakistan about the pakistani cuban relationship it's a very interesting discussion and we're going to show you also some clips from a very moving and touching documentary made by and produced by the media team of the Cuban president, Fidel Castro. Coming up next.
and how Cuba and Pakistan are forging their relationship from the ashes of last year's earthquake. Last week here in Islamabad, we witnessed a very touching event. Cuba, the embassy of the Republic of Cuba actually, launched here in Islamabad a very beautiful documentary. This documentary was uh, filmed by the media team of the president of Cuba, His Excellency President Fidel Castro. Now, this movie was uh, a 36 minutes movie basically, but it was a movie with a difference. One of the finest uh, film uh, producers and directors of Cuba uh, made this film and then we had a very fine uh, Cuban uh, musician uh, putting a, an original soundtrack for this film so it was touching but the most important thing about this movie was that it, it told it, it told the story it gave the story of the Cuban medical contingent that came to Pakistan over 2,500 hundred uh, Cubans, uh, doctors, healthcare professionals came here and worked here over the months that followed the tragic earthquake that hit us last year. So it was a very interesting thing. Now in this segment I'd like to show you clips uh, from this uh, documentary and especially uh, the recording of a telephone conversation between President Musharraf and President Fidel Castro. It's very interesting. You gotta, you have to wait and watch uh, for that. But first, I would like to have uh, a sort of a conversation with uh, His Excellency Ivan Mora, the ambassador of the Republic of Cuba here in Islamabad. Thank you very much, Ambassador Mora, for joining us. Let's come to the relationship between our two countries. We know that President Castro made a very wonderful humanitarian gesture uh, after the earthquake by sending all these people, great people from, from your country, doctors, uh, nurses, who came and helped our people after the earthquake. Now, it's very interesting. Pakistan, politically speaking, has been a very close ally of the United States. Politically speaking, we've always been with what we call the free world. Uh, very close with the United States, we're very close to Western Europe. Cuba, on the other hand, for the same time, uh, during the Cold War, the past 50 years, has not been at the very best of terms with the United States. But now we are seeing this relationship between our two countries developing. It's very fascinating. Your thoughts about that? Well, thank you very much for inviting me to, to this uh, program. Uh, and thank you to you and to the people of Pakistan for accepting the help that our President Fidel Castro, our government and our people offer to the people of Pakistan. We, despite the, the analysis that you made right now that uh, we could have different views regarding politics or different view uh, regarding the relations with the United States, the decision to come here was based mainly on a humanitarian basis because of the need and the tragic moment that the Pakistani people was suffering because of the earthquake of uh, October the 8th. On the that basis, uh, our president threw the idea that it's necessary to send the most qualified medical team to send 275 tons of sophisticated equipment to send 240 tons of medicines free in order to attend those people. I mean. This is on the basis because of the tragic moment of Pakistan, but also because of the friendship between Pakistan and Cuba. And Cuba and Pakistan has a long story of friendship in the international uh, arena. How is that? Tell us about that. For example, we share, and that I think that is the most important basis, Cuba, uh, Pakistan and Cuba, as non-aligned country, has very, very much active in all international a scenario, mainly in United Nations, defending the cause of developing countries, defending the interests of developing countries in the WTO, where uh, despite even that we have different economy, mm. we have common point in the international uh, trade mm. right now. In this context, we can go through all the map of issues, of international issues, and we could find that Pakistan and Cuba has common shares, common principles, common views on what is happening in this world, how we should face it, 
how we can get uh, united, how the developing country should help each other, and how in a moment of tragic is a, is a matter of principle to defend, to try to help to the other developing countries, despite that the powerful in this world cannot provide the necessary help, the necessary financial resources to face that issue. And I think the sample of Cuba should take into account that during six months, 2,500 uh, medical teams was able to attend more than 1.5 million of people in the affected areas. So you mean 2,500 Cuban healthcare professionals tended to 1.5 million earthquake victims? That's it. It's a huge number. That's it. It's a huge number, mm. but that demonstrates that if Cuba, a very small, distant, blockade country, can do it, why not the big mm. powers, the big uh, countries mm. that have all the resources, that have all the technology, cannot do it? We feel that this is a, a, a moment that Pakistan needs a lot of help from the international community. And that is the message that we would like to convey. That is necessary to continue fighting to get that uh, assistance. That is necessary that in the moment of reconstruction and rehabilitation of Pakistan, the international community should double the efforts to provide resources, but mainly human resources to provide uh, the possibility that Pakistan in, that is still facing a very difficult moment could go ahead with their priorities, that is the development of the countries. You make a very interesting point. Now, uh, so, so we have a history and we go a long way back actually, Cuba and yeah. Pakistan. Now, uh, building on, on this extreme, uh, I mean before of course we had uh, good cooperation between our governments in, in various yeah. international forums, but now you've also developed this immense goodwill within the Pakistani people. So where are we taking this relationship from this point forward? I think that is a very uh, a great uh, point for developing and reinforce our relations. We we feel that uh, now the Pakistani people know very well the Pakistani, the Cuban, sorry, the Cuban people. They have met with the doctor mm. that despite different culture, mm. they feel like a family. Mm. I, in the documentary, you will see many people mm. uh, how Pakistani are crying mm. when know that the Cuban doctor will leave, how the Cuban doctors are crying mm. when they are living here people that feel like fathers, uh, mother, uh, mm. son. And, and, and I think that is the basis to develop in all the spectrum of the issues, the relationships. We have made an, a very important offer to the government of Pakistan that is uh, to have the possibility that 1,000 young Pakistani people mm. could study medicine in Cuba, in our universities. You could also extend uh, to our government your assistance, your, your country's help and assistance in the area of training our national football team. Because we have a very lousy football team that needs good training in, in football. And in Cuba, of course, we have great football players. So you could help us in that as well. Um, I mean, this is something that you but could consider seriously. But not in football. In football, we are not so good. Oh, really? We are very good in baseball. Oh, you we are, are very yeah, good in yeah. boxing. Mm. We are very good to work in so many as in We're not bad in sports. boxing ourselves, but hey, be baseball could be something that you could teach baseball. us. It looks very similar but to cricket. But in that case, we will need uh, to get some uh, development for your assistant in the cricket, to yeah, develop sure. cricket in yeah, Cuba. Definitely, definitely. Well, recently we had President Bush here, and we tried to give him to teach him some tricks about how to play cricket, but I don't think he really got on very well. Thank you to, to the Pakistani people for accepting us to allow us to help you. And, and this concludes our, our, this segment, of course, with uh, uh, His Excellency Ambassador Ivan Mora, the Ambassador of the Republic of Cuba here in Islamabad. And we conclude with him, but now let's move on and let us show you some of the very interesting clips. And I assure you these are very interesting clips from the documentary on the hillsides of the Himalayas. Let's watch.
it is it is my honor to be speaking to him i want to right away express my extreme gratitude for uh, the feelings the warmth and the and the uh, the commitment that the uh, mr president is showing towards uh, whatever we are suffering the great suffering that we are having here in pakistan the the doctors that have come from cuba are doing an excellent job and i personally and the pakistani nation are extremely touched and extremely grateful to the to mr president yo deseo recordar que para nosotros pakistan es un gran amigo lo que hace falta es buena voluntad y personal capacitado para ayudar a, a su noble y, y valiente país nosotros los cubanos le agradecemos que no haya permitido trabajar en apoyo del pueblo pakistaní y que puede tener la seguridad que podemos hacer más todavía. body of my grandmother first and my mother first and in first day and the second day of heart at uh, the dead body of my my father my aunt and my little cousin i say that once earth was broken and i am in the earth and I am very thank thankful to doctor that had comes and help us I thank to give a doctor with the core of my heart El momento más triste cuando la nieve nos tumbó al hospital ¿Y qué hicieron? Levantarlo al día siguiente por la lejanía, por la situación climatológica, por las barreras del idioma y, y verdad ha funcionado muy bien este, este hecho de trabajar juntos, de que ella sea la doctora Arieli y yo ser el enfermero Ariel y que juntos visitamos muchos lugares aquí de, de Pakistán. Me llegó bastante que esta sea mi primera experiencia, me ha llegado bastante y le agradezco a todas las personas que tuvieron que, que ver con este con este momento y en especial a mi jefe de, de hospital, a Carlos, que también me ha dado mucha fuerza antes que llegara mi hermano y ahora los dos Carlos es como si fuese mi padre aquí y mi hermano, mi mano derecha, mi todo. Admiro muchas cosas, ¿no? Pero una de las cosas que más admiro es que está muy bien preparada y, y que se puede confiar en ella. Okay. Yes, okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Especially for you people. And especially I want to be message my Fidel Fidel Castro to salam alaikum and goodbye. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Bye. bye. The Fidel Castro, he is beard, he is mouse stitches, just like us, just like my father, just like my brother. I love him. I love you people also. I feel everybody in district Batagram they you they like you people when you will move oh we will weep we will suffer we will lose something now you are with me we are very happy i lose my so many friends my relatives but you are with me i am happy i i i weep now but when you are coming oh i so happy 
But when you will be back, so we will weep again. Bueno, realmente esta escena se repite a cada instante con nosotros. Eh, los pacientes aquí son extremadamente agradecidos porque el profesional cubano no solo es la, el, o sea, la calidad en la atención que se brinda, sino la confianza que se da. Ellos sienten confianza en nosotros, le respeto que hay hacia ellos. Porque caricias así de tomar la mano, de dar un beso, esto no es común. Cuando nosotros salimos a la calle, eh, que nos preguntan, hey, dice doctor, ¿qué hubo? Entonces nos dan la mano, nos dicen, Fidel Castro, hombre grande, Barbú, hombre grande, grande. Así, con mucha alegría, con mucha emoción, que ellos se refieren a, a los cubanos, a Fidel, te hablan. Entonces incluso un, un hombre que estaba con una camisa verde dice, eh, Fidel, que como que usaba el uniforme verde igual que él. You have a wonderful team of doctors. They are not only doctors. They are very kind-hearted people. They are wonderful human beings and they have, you know, like a soul, I would say, like let me say it from my heart, they have a soul of an angel and they were like angels for us in our country and they were great people I ever met in my life, in my this, you know, service and in this my age of mine. Wonderful people, I would say. Wonderful. Salandi Sahar Garma Mahan Unguli This Duaguli Sahar Duaguli Mahan Okay Okay desde un inicio la barrera del idioma no ha sido difícil, ¿no? Eh, hemos tenido que relacionarnos los síntomas con lo que ellos han expresado. Además nos han ayudado algunos mm, de la zona que hablan dos, tres idiomas y nos, nos han enseñado poco a poco cómo atender los pacientes. Dar ni más ni más tres temas. Pan y quesa. Cuba, calinda de Cuba, le care fin de la querema, bing, 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 pa que tú vas como nuestra alguien. Relativo. Eh, ask question, when they start with the problem in the, the children. ¿Y qué no es eso? ¿Y qué no es eso? ¿Y qué no es eso? ¿Sale por ahí? No, no. ¿Tres meses? ¿Tres meses? Dos, tres meses. Dos, tres meses. Sí. Y es la cuestión y el hit. In the in the phone? No, no, no. 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 Ah, eh, trabajo con los niños que nos están ayudando es muy importante para nosotros, ya que ha sido el medio de cómo acercarnos a la población. I come every day here and I go to Cuban doctor home to home and check the patient and speak English doctor. Ellos nos sirven de apoyo porque cuando necesitamos salir a recorrer eh, las comunidades cercanas al, a, al hospital donde nos encontramos localizados, ellos conocen la zona y nos llevan, nos sirven de guía y de, a la vez de traductores. Ellos conocen el barrio, nos llevan a los lugares ya que ellos conocen donde hay embarazadas, donde hay niños pequeños. A veces nosotros queremos entrar a una casa y nos dicen, no, 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 en, en esta. Y muchas cosas más, comparten el chocolate con nosotros, le comparten la merienda y comparten ese pedacito hasta a veces que, que vamos salimos de, a la esquina con, aunque sea a coger aire y ya ellos nos están esperando vamos vamos y nos, hasta ellos nos protegen y nos guíen es algo que se va a extrañar mucho de verdad do you miss when yes, the doctor I, come back yes you go to Cuba uh, come back and I miss you and you my friend I like Cuba doctor and Cuba Cuba family I like ay chiquitico chiquitico Ay muchachos, nos van a extrañar mucho. Did you miss him? Yes. When I return to Cuba. Yes. <laughs> Pakistani people never, uh, never, uh, you can say, for, forget this events with the Cuban people because they help in very difficult condition. And that's why uh, we can say Fidal, Fidal Castre, Viva Fidal Castre, Viva Fidal Castre. This is my first time that I have met Cubans and now I have developed a lot, lot of love and affection for Cuba, especially for your president who was kind to send so many doctors to our country 
and especially the people who have come to save our people and to serve them with pride and honor and now cuba remains in my heart that was the documentary on the hillsides of the himalayas produced by the media team of the Cuban president, uh, President Fidel Castro. Very moving scenes indeed there. Uh, and we'd like to thank, of course, uh, both the uh, Pakistani Ministry of Information and Broadcasting and the Embassy of the Republic of Cuba uh, for giving us uh, uh, a copy of this uh, documentary that we just uh, showed you some clips uh, from. Let me move on right now to the email. Some very interesting email I received, and I'd, I'd like to begin with an email that I received actually from the city of Mazari Sharif in northern Afghanistan from Ishaq Khan. Very interesting. Let me read it. I want to share an, an, uh, some information with you. Here in Afghanistan, anti Pakistan campaign is going on. Why is this happening? Why are they acting like this? Who is backing this campaign? Your government must investigate this. I am an Afghan, but I am disturbed that some of my brothers are doing this against a country that gave us shelter for 37 years. This was Ishaq Khan from Mazari Sharif in northern Afghanistan. I really have nothing to add to this, of course. We did a uh, couple of, uh, in our past uh, two editions, we did talk about this. Uh, and of course, we're going to continue to uh, monitor uh, this story in the future. Let me move on to other emails uh, that we received. Um, another email from Shabir Ahmed Khan from Takht Bahai uh, near Peshawar, Northwest Frontier Province. And he writes, I have just started watching your program, your show, which I think should be credited for its comparatively open discussions on national and international issues. Thank you, Shabir. Uh, Praise is always welcome in our program. Um, also, I received two emails that commented on our last week's edition. And just to remind you, we hosted uh, three young American politicians in our program last week uh, who talked uh, about uh, the legislative process in the United States and how policies are made in Washington, D.C. And then we also had uh, Shirin Mazari, a renowned Pakistani defense analyst, who talked about Afghan President Hamid Karzai's visit to India. We discussed all of that and I received two emails commenting about this. The first one from Ilyas Khan who wrote to us from Mardan in uh, Northwest Frontier Province. Ilyas writes, uh, let me congratulate you first on presenting such a wonderful program. I have great interest in world politics, especially concerning Pakistan. Your discussion with young American politicians and with Shireen Mazari was excellent. I'd like to see more discussions on the Indo-American nuclear deal. Ilyas Khan from Mardan, Northwest Frontier Province. Ilyas, we did discuss, of course, the Indo-American nuclear deal. Uh, and uh, as the story develops, we'll try to follow, of course, the story in the future and try to bring some really quality discussion on uh, the, the nuclear deal. A similar email we received from uh, Tajuddin Dumar from Kuwaita, from Balochistan. And Tajuddin writes, I'm a student of international relations. I know the meaning of a strategic relationship with China, but I have no clue about the strategic relationship with the United States. Can you elucidate? And your interview with Shireen Mazari was excellent. You people are doing a great uh, job. Your program is directly helping the students of CSS. Tajuddin Dumar from Kuwaita, Baluchistan, thank you very much. Um, your first question, you know the meaning of strategic relationship with China, but you have no clue about the strategic relationship with the United States. Uh, well, it's, it's a long subject. Of course, I could answer it, but uh, why not leave it for a future edition where we try to really have uh, some experts really discussing and telling us exactly what are the contours, the framework of this strategic relationship uh, with the United States, of course, and Pakistan. So we'll do that in the future. Now, before I go, I'd like to tell you that uh, we're beginning a new segment in our program, and it's called Make a Statement. Now, in this uh, segment, every week, I'm going to ask you a question a topic. I'm going to propose a topic, something controversial that's happening on the world stage. And I would like to hear as much as possible from you. Write to us in our program and your emails will go on air. 
we'd like to get the pulse of the Pakistani political elite, the students of politics and international relations across Pakistan, what they're thinking. People, ordinary people who are interested in politics, what do you think about the issues uh, concerning our times? And so make a statement will be basically you making a statement on our screen and on our program. So let me begin with this week. And this week, actually, we have a very interesting issue, a very interesting question. You can see, that, uh, see the question right now on the screen. Arab governments are telling the Hamas movement, the Palestinian Hamas movement, to recognize Israel. Now, should we in Pakistan tell Hamas the same thing so that at least the international financial aid to the Palestinian people can be resumed? I repeat the question. Arab governments are telling Hamas to recognize Israel. Should we in Pakistan tell Hamas the same thing so that international financial aid can be resumed to the Palestinians? Very simple questions, a controversial issue uh, these days. Uh, I'm sure many of you are following this story. Do write to us, tell us what you think. And you can write to us on worldview at pdv dot com dot pk worldview at pdv dot com dot pk i'll be waiting your emails and of course your answers and your thoughts and your opinions about this question will go on air in our next edition and until then i should say allah hafiz from here